It's Friday night, you guys have had a long week. You get to have a date night. What restaurant do you guys go to in the city of Madison and why? He likes Firehouse. We tend to go to Firehouse Subs. We're kind of low key. We've been around people all week, been at work. We want to go somewhere and just kind of eat a sandwich, get quiet, and then we usually go back and watch a movie. Locally here, we love Sam and Greg's. That's a that's a quick, um, that wouldn't be maybe date night. That way it might be with the kids. We usually go to Casablanca because we like Mexican. We go to the Hunt Club. We enjoy going to have a steak night at the Hunt Club. And the good thing is we get to share a steak, and um, it's awesome. Foolin every Friday night. Friday night. Every Friday night. Crispy green beans, best in the whole world. Well, if you know anything about Teddy, the restaurant would be home because he doesn't want to spend a dime doing anything that he hasn't already budgeted for the week. Well, Paul, before I get started, <clears throat> Moore never lets me go out anywhere without wearing this cap. <laughs> well, I can understand that. So, yeah, I, I mean, I have to wear it to church, you know, everywhere. So, probably. It wouldn't be a dinner, but Main Street Cafe, most likely. Tell me a strong attribute about your spouse and how it makes a positive impact for this council and our city. John's a big leader in everything he does, even in his other jobs and, um, and what he does around the city, because um, he coaches Drew's baseball team, coaches basketball, that kind of stuff. So I'd say his leadership role. And then also he's very hardworking. He will tell you the truth. He will not sugarcoat it. Um, so his honesty is sometimes brutal, but he's honest. Greg's probably his strongest is his, um, you know, he's a small business owner here in Madison. So, I mean, I think that that gives him a perspective about just the finances and also being uh, responsible with the, the funds of the city. Well, I think the fact that she's the only female on the council, she brings a different perspective. Um, she can be assertive at times. I think probably his passion for a town that he loves. It makes it easy. He is a consensus builder. I think he's um, very careful before he speaks. He, he tends to think things through. And I think that's a good quality. That he's analytical. He can find a needle in a haystack. He's the only person I know that keeps a calculator in every single room of the house. And I mean every room. We have so many great events in the city of Madison. Which one is your favorite and how come? Greg and I both grew up here, so we've been going to the street festival for just forever. And so just watching it change and evolve over the years has been, has been fun. It's got the parade and all the kids come out and they usually have the face painting and you know a lot of activities for the kids and I enjoy that. It's the Madison Street Festival, but absolutely near and dear to my heart. And I've been on the committee for many years and chaired it for three years and watched it grow from Sadly, a declining little event to 35 to 40,000 people in a town that big. So it's a good place to be. It's really enjoyable just to see all those people come through and enjoy Madison as a whole. Probably the concerts in the park on Thursday evenings. Uh, you know, the different types of groups that come out and it's uh, just a folksy type thing. I would say the game against Bob Jones and um, James Clements. Um, we're big football fans anyway, and he's sports fans, and it's, you know it brings everybody out from the city, and we enjoy it. And everybody gets to celebrate, even no matter who wins. I have a lot of events that I like in Madison, and partially because I work with the Arts Council. I have to agree, the concerts in the park downtown have always been my favorite. Um, I like Christmas Card Lane because I think that's very festive, and it brings lots of people from everywhere. Um, I've met lots of people who drove from Gurley, who drove from Athens, who came to Madison downtown to see it, and they stopped and had a bite to eat while they were here. Is there anything that you've told your spouse that needs to be added to the city of Madison? Trader Joe's. Oh, I'd have to say maybe Dave and Buster's. Usually something to do with shoes or um, clothing. So I'm like, I want Steinmart, I would like a dress barn. Um, I used to pitch for Macy's. I have to agree with Mickey, I'm all about shopping. If we could have something like that in Madison, so I could go shopping for shoes and purses and things like that, because shoes and purses are my thing. Sacks, sacks, all right. over and over again. I would love to get a Costco on County Line Road. I would say Trader Joe's, and also I would say Sephora. We, you know, there's one, close by, but I would rather have one closer to me in Madison because I spend a lot of money at Sephora. <laughs> it's one of my favorite places. You're watching our city council meeting on TV and you want to reach to the screen and tell your spouse what? Less is more. Don't say too much. Just say what you need to say without saying something you're going to regret. 
put the water bottle down. <laughs> he will drink his, the water bottle and they'll start either hitting his hand with it or hitting it places. Uh, and I've actually texted him before and told him to put the water bottle down. <laughs> I actually asked him, is his head that heavy? Because he's always doing this on the table. He's holding his head up like he's just really tired. <laughs> Not to say, uh. And actually, you know this, but I'm a tax texting all of you and telling you what to do during most of it anyway. Uh, probably quit elbowing Steve in the ribs. Sit up straight. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, it's fun to watch him on TV. I mean, it's fun to kind of watch just the whole process. I mean, it, it's been interesting to um, to see how everybody interacts with each other. And uh, yeah, I, I, try to, I try to stay out of that, that side of it though. Stop. If you're thinking about saying it, don't. <laughs> Be slow to speak and slow to anger. During the campaign, was there a memorable story as you were knocking on doors? A lot of our district is where I also teach and a lot of the um, neighborhoods go to my school. So I got to see a lot of my students who answer the door and then I would go to school and they would say, oh, um, we're gonna vote for your husband for mayor and I'm like, he's not running for mayor. <laughs> when we started going door to door, it was obvious that people were looking for fresh and new and Gerald had the charisma and the ability to win most people over. I wasn't really looking forward to it, the whole walking process. Greg loved it, as you can imagine, because he likes to talk to people, but I was surprised at how um, welcoming and open people were. When Steve said he wanted to run the first time, I was like, please, just, I'll do anything, just don't make me go door to door. I'm the introvert in the family and I did not want to do that. And it was hot, 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 hot. And about an hour into it, he called and he said, I've been bitten by a dog. And I said, I'm not coming and walking up Rainbow. I'm not going to do it. You're going to do it by yourself. And he said, Debbie, I've been bitten by a dog. I said, stop being a baby. I'm not going to come walk up Rainbow with you. So when he got home and the dog had bitten through his shorts and into his thigh and it was a Doberman and I kind of felt badly about that. We were in Edgewater, I believe, and one afternoon we had my ex-husband, who is still very dear to me, and my daughter, and Teddy. We were all knocking on doors. We had split up to take different streets. And there was a gentleman at one of the houses that said, you know, your, your ex-husband had already been through here before, and it really impressed me that you got along so well that you can, if you can get along with your wife's ex-husband, then surely you can get along with lots of other people. And since then, um, Teddy refers to him as his husband-in-law. I was wearing my more, vote for more Robleski or else t-shirt and uh, walked up to this guy's house and he had a hose and he was out hosing, but he also had a, a sign that says no, solic no soliciting. And uh, so I took thought of it. I said, do I walk up to this guy? Cause he could, you know, hose, you know, hose me down, but it was really hot. And I says, this could be good. So I continued walking and he aimed the hose at me. Finally, I walked a little further, sprayed me, and um, kept spraying me. And I finally kind of got out of there. And as I was leaving, I go, don't forget to vote for Mara, and walked on. This council has been together a year now. What grade do you give them on a scale of one to 10? I would give this one probably about a nine. I think th it seems like they, uh, they're talking more. Oh, 11. I do think it's much better. I think there is room for improvement. Um, I would probably say communication is probably a seven or an eight. The way that they work together, I think that they all have had such strengths and I think this council is definitely a 10. I say B plus because there's always room for improvement, but uh, the communication's been great and talking to different people, uh, it's, it, everybody seems to think the same thing, that the council's doing much better. I'd say a 10, they work all together very well and I've enjoyed getting to know each of them and they care about the city and I think that's what's most important.